So, I have Mr. Conjurer himself. Oh yeah, that's that's me. The, the Conjurer. Yeah. <laughs> Is it Conjurer or Conjurer? See, now that varies. We, we say Conjurer, Conjurer, but then when we went over to America, they couldn't grasp that. They had no, they were like, Conj Conjurer? Well, how do you say that? And we're like, oh, okay, here we go. Five weeks of this. <laughs> speaking, speaking of which, how was the States, man? So good. It was so incredible. Like, we expected to play to like 10 people a night, no one really care, like, be all tired, horrible, hate each other. And then we got there and it was just five weeks of, for me personally anyway, like five weeks of joy. I loved it. Yeah, because yeah. I feel that you know, especially being on that tour with Rivers and everything, yeah. was a massive step for you guys. That was, yeah, that was, in terms of tours we've done, that was already a step up, and then for it to be in America, which like off a debut album, no one goes to America. That's weird. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Riv the Rivers guys were super cool for getting us out there. They looked after us incredibly. Like it, it was incredible. Yeah, the whole thing was just wicked. Getting to see this album every night, stupid. Yeah, I know. I can imagine <laughs> five weeks of the best album. That's the thing. It's like. Uh, we watch, obviously you watch it for like the first week, you're like, yeah, you pick all your favourite bits and you're like, okay, week two or three I'll probably start watching every single night. Really? Yeah, every single night you're like, this is really good. This is, <laughs> this is, yeah, I like this. <laughs> so, um, tell us about like Maya. Did you, did you ever expect it to get to the level that it's gone to? Honestly, no. Like, you hope for, like, because obviously we've got a really good, I say obviously, but we have a really good team behind us, Holy Raw, Hold Tight, all of that sort of stuff. So you, you have hopes for like, oh, I hope people like it, that sort of thing, decent reviews in Kerrang, Metal Hammer, all of that. Uh, your review was lovely, by the way. Thank you that. very much. We're very, very happy that you like it. Thanks, man. Um, but yeah, it, even when it kicked off and it got great press and all that, we were like, okay, that's crazy, but in a few months, no one will care. That's kind of been the thing. It's like the fact that we're playing Download over a year, like after it came out, we got to do America. We're going back to America later. The fact that people still care, like over a year on, is ridiculous. Like we don't really know what to do with it. We just keep getting all these offers, and we're like, well, yeah, obviously we're going to do that. Well, now you get to hear Revocation play the Outer Ones. Exactly. <laughs> Lucky bastard. I know. I know. We we've done nothing to deserve any of this. Like we were just on tour. I think we were in LA or something when we got. It was like, oh yeah. We've got another tour offer. Oh, okay, what is it? And we're like, do we want to come back out to America so soon? And I was like, revocation. Yes, yes, we do want to go out to America so soon. Um, in terms of the artwork, can you explain what that kind of what that means, what it is? Yeah. So, I, annoyingly, I can't remember the specifics. It's effectively it's based off the song Maya. Okay. Um, and it's all kind of it's this old traditional like folk song or poem, something like that that Dan, the vocalist and guitarist, who writes most of the lyrics and that sort of stuff that he was really into so it's all based around that um, so we effectively sent that concept to uh, an artist his name is Rodrigo um, and he came back with with basically what you see we didn't make it that many tweaks or anything like that like we sent him a pic the bridge in there I think Dan had found a picture of a bridge that he liked or this bridge is part of that folk tale something along those lines and so yeah we just sent him that concept all based we sent him that song poem whatever it is he basically, I'm assuming he had to translate it, figured out what it meant, sent us back that piece of art, and we were like, all oh, this is wicked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the only things we had to figure out was like, oh, well, what colour do we want it in, and all of that. Yeah. But, so yeah, it's all based off of that. And so, the song is The Maya, whereas the album's just Maya, so it's not, it's not, at least the title and that sort of thing isn't based solely on that song, but a lot of the themes and all that for the artwork do come from that. What yeah. kind of themes are there on the record? Is it is it a concept album? It's sort not. Of. There's... We tried really hard to make it like consistent and that sort of thing so that it flows but it's not really a concept album. There's a few themes of like, it's a, it's kind of a sad album, not sad in like a oh, woe is me kind of way, but like there's stuff about like substance abuse, all that like choke is strongly inspired. Dan watched the Amy Winehouse documentary and that, so that's all about the gutter press and that sort of stuff and how celebrities like Amy Winehouse unfortunately kind of forced and pigeonholed into that sort of stuff. There's stuff about, yeah, depression, that sort of stuff. Maya, like I say, is just based on a folk traditional thing. Um, hey, all the last song, that's just about how deep the ocean is. Uh, Basically, it's just about that whole, like, we have no idea what's down there. That's weird. And um, in terms of any new material, is there yeah. any on the horizon? There is. It's so slow. It's so slow <laughs> and painful. We, for the, for the longest time, we had like one song. Okay. Um, look, the ball has just about started to roll a little bit because it would be like we tour, we tour, we tour. We're, we're very, like, we can't write on the road or anything like that. We don't get in a room and jam. We're very much write something at home, email it over, 
and then we basically play the songs once we think they're done. Okay. Then we'll get in a rehearsal room and kind of jam it out and make sure it's okay. But yeah, so it takes us ages to write because of that. And so yeah, for ages we had one song. We had like two months off where we wanted to write and just nothing came out. And then yeah, now we're slowly getting there. I think we've got coming up to about three songs. But the idea is we're basically busy playing festivals, touring the rest of the year. Then next year we want to try and take off as much as we can to write. Hopefully get it recorded by the end of next year. If it goes really well, it might even be out by the end of next year. If not, early 2021. But there is stuff on the horizon, hopefully, yeah, yeah. Things come to those who wait. Though. Exactly, yeah. It's that sort of thing. Holy Roar, and we just recently signed with Nuclear Blast over in America. Like, they are being so cool. They're not rushing us or anything. They're not like, we need an album now. They're just like, look, take your time, write a good album, send it to us when it's done. Which is great for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's incredible. Like, I, you know, you mentioned Holy Roar. I feel like they're a real fertile ground for Absolutely. these new yeah, bands. Yeah. They are, yeah that everybody is starting to know about them which is good but especially like when Maya came out and that sort of thing like they do not get the credit they deserve the amount of consistent albums they're bringing out by such good artists and that sort of stuff like they are in terms of, again I might be slightly biased because obviously we work with them but in terms of this growth that the UK metal scene is seeing at the moment I feel like that's such a big like factor in that yeah awesome man well thank you so much for having a chat thank you dude. Yeah, thank you.